So divergent evolution, homologous organs. Convergent evolution, analogous organs. One called white-winged moth called piston beetle area and the other one called melanic form called piston carbonaria. What is paleontology? Study of fossils. So fossil study is also one basis. So what is adaptive radiation? How do we define the word called adaptive radiation? The process of evolution of, so what is embryology? Embryology is a branch of biology which deals with the study of development of an embryo. So even organs having a similar basic structure and common origin but perform different functions are called homologous. Hello everyone, welcome back to this very interesting chapter called evolution session 3 of this chapter called evolution myself Vishobarani from the department of biology Vidyashram Pre University College the temple of excellence what did we learn in the last session hope you remember we studied about the evidences as we all know that evolution is incredibly and unimaginable slow process and it is very difficult to observe the process in one's lifetime. However, there are discrete, direct and indirect evidences to prove the process of evolution. So in the last session we studied about one such evidence called, so there are many evidences to prove evolution from almost all branches of biology. Right, so we have studied that there are a good number of evidences like we have paleontological which I have already explained, paleontological evidence, then comparative anatomy and morphological evolution. So paleontological evidence, comparative anatomy and morphological evidence, comparative embryology, comparative embryology, fourth physiology and biochemistry, natural selection and molecular and molecular biology. So hope you remember uh, there are many a good number of evidences put across almost in all from all branches of biology like we have the paleontological evidence, the comparative anatomy and morphological evidence, then we have this comparative embryology evidence, then physiology and biochemistry, natural selection and molecular biology. Have in the last session I have explained about paleontological evidence. What is paleontology? Study of fossils. So fossil study is also one basis to prove the process of evidence. Moving on to the second very important evidence that is comparative anatomy and morphological evidence. The very word itself will tell you what is anatomy? Study of internal structure. What is morphology? Study of external features. So what is this comparative anatomy and uh, morphological evidence? The comparative anatomy and morphological evidences show what similarities and differences among the organisms of today and those that existed years ago. So the anatomical features and the morphological features, the differences and the similarities that are found in the organism will pave a way for the study of evolution. How the evolution has to, as I said, the present day uh, organisms have evolved from the past animals. As I said, evolution is nothing but a very gradual, slow process that has taken place in due, due course of Time. So comparative anatomy and morphological evidences show similarities and differences among organisms of today and those that existed years ago. So stepwise changes, step, there is a stepwise changes that have reflected in the anatomy of the bones, the brain, heart and other organs of different group of 
vertebrate so when we do the comparative study then definitely we'll get to know that how the present day organisms have evolved from the past organisms so the comparative anatomy and the comparative morphological study will definitely help us to understand about this very important process called evolution so the Comparative anatomy and morphological study is useful for understanding the similarities, differences and functional and non-functional structures. As we know there are three types of organs namely homologous organs, analogous organs and vestigial organs. So what are the three types of organs we come across? The homologous organs, analogous organs and vestigial organs. As I said evidences so evolution is something which is incredibly and unimaginable slow process and it is very difficult for us to understand to know about this process in one's lifetime as i said there are many a discrete direct and indirect evidences to prove the process of evolution like we have the paleontological evidence compared to anatomy and morphological evidence we have physiology and biochemistry then we have molecular biology evidence we have natural selection then we have comparative embryology. Moving on to the second type that is comparative anatomy and morphological evidence. As I said, comparative anatomy and morphological evidence shows what similarities and dissimilarities in the organisms of today and that have evolved from the past. So stepwise changes are reflected where in the bones, brain, heart and other organs of different groups of vertebrates. And this comparative anatomy and morphological study is useful for understanding what the similarities and different differences and even the functional aspects also functional and non-functional aspects also can be studied. And as I said there are three types of uh, uh, organs namely homologous organs, analogous organs and vestigial organs. Anyhow I am going to explain uh, in the coming slide. Moving on to the homologous organs. So comparative study can be done with the homologous organs. So what are homologous organs? Let us understand these three types. Homologous, homologous organs, analogous organs, then vestigial organs. Here the picture what you are seeing is homologous organ. What are homologous organs? Organs which are similar in origin but different in functions. So the origin is same. The organ, organs which have homologous organs are, are the organs which have common origin but different function. Whereas in case of analogous organs, organs which have different origin but same function. Same function but different origin. Here same origin different function. What do you mean by vestigial organs? Organs which are present but are of no use. For example like the appendix in human body is a vestigial organ. Though it is present it is of no use. So the such organs are called vestigial organs. So let us study about the first one called homologous organs. As I said homologous organs are those organs which have a common origin but different function. So what are this? Homologous organ. You can see this beautiful picture you can see. Right? Organs having a similar basic structure and common origin but perform different functions are called homologous organs. So having what? Common origin. So organs having a similar basic structure that is the basic structure and common origin but perform different functions are called a homologous organs. You will understand best about this homologous organs with different examples like the four limbs of man. Here you can see the four limbs of man, four limbs of cheetah, then the flaps of whale and wings of bat. You can take the other example. Thorns of bougainvillea and tendrils of cucurbita. See here four limbs are man of man are used for Walking. Four limbs of cheetah are used for running. Flaps are whale. Uh, flaps of whale is used for swimming. So wings of bat is used for flying. So different functions, but all those have a common origin. For example, you take the thorns of bougainvillea. Thorns are main, meant for what? Defense. And tendrils of cucurbita for anchorage for climbing. Different functions, but they have a common origin. So development of organs in different directions. 
so in relation to specific need to adapt to environment is called divergent evolution this is a very very important concept from examination point of view so divergent evolution homologous organs convergent evolution analogous organs so what are homologous organs as i said here you can see the the flaps of whale is used for what swimming but it is used for flying whale is an aquatic mammal and cheetah for running and this is for locomotion this is for movement this is used for movement so homologous organs that is organs having a similar basic structure and common origin but perform different functions are called homologous organs four limbs of my examples four limbs of man four limbs of cheetah flaps of whale wings of bat if you take the example of plant thorns of bougainvillea and tendrils of cucurbita and what is divergent evolution development of organs in different directions in relation to specific need so as you know adapt adaptation is one very important characteristic feature of organisms to adapt to any type of environment is called divergent evolution moving on to analogous organs here you can see in this beautiful picture the wings of bird the wings of bat and the wings of butterfly all the wings of all these three animals is used for what for flying so they have what common function common function but different but different but different origin now let us see as i said analogous organs are organs having having common function having common function but different structure and origin different structure and origin so analogous organs organs having different structure and different see here you can see different structure different origin but perform similar function are called analogous organs what are the examples of take the wings of bird wings of bat and wings of butterfly all these are used for what flying common function common function that is flying right you take the flipper of penguin and dolphin may we use for fly use for swimming eye of octopus and eye of mammal for vision then tubers of potato and tubers of sweet potato right they are for vegetative propagation development so what is convergent evolution then development of organs to perform same function with a different structure in different groups of organisms is called convergent they perform different function with same structure and same origin was called divergent evolution here development of organs to perform same function with a different structure in different uh, group of organisms is called what convergent evolution this is a very very important point from examination point of view it is usually asked in the exam and also this one part homologous and analogous organs are also a very important uh, question which is given in even in the practicals also so this is very very important concept to understand both from theory point of view and from practical point of view so children you have to remember uh, understand this concept about what is homologous and what is analogous organs so i repeat once again what are homologous organs organs which are having common structure and common origin but different functions whereas analogous organs are those organs which are which have common function but differ different structure and origin so uh, homologous organs divergent evolution analogous organs convergent evolution and you have to remember the examples their best example is what thorns of bougainvillea and tendrils of cucurbita here you can take the example of wings of birds and wings of bat right so these examples are also very important from examination point of view as i said uh, th there is one question in your practical which is related to this particular concept called homologous and analogous organs here moving on to the next evidence called embryological evidence what is embryology embryology is nothing but a branch of biology which deals with the study of development of an 
embryo. So what is embryology? Embryology is a branch of biology which deals with the study of development of an embryo. So even embryological evidence also gives a very very important uh, evidence to prove that evolution has taken place. As I said evolution is nothing but a gradual process. So by uh, seeing the embryological evidence also so we can see how the present day animals have evolved. So study of developmental history of organisms is called embryology. Early embryos of several vertebrates pass through common development stages such as morula, blastula and gastrula indicating common ancestry. So there are different, uh, what is embryo developing individual is called as an embryo and you know the zygote that is formed after the fusion of uh, the male and the female gamete forms into an embryo with various developmental stages with various developmental stages like you have come across blastula, morula and gastrula. All these are the developments. So here you can see in these beautiful pictures how the animals have evolved. So here you can see the salamander, here you can see the chick, then here you can see the cat, here rabbit and human. How the embryos have evolved. From there to here you can see how the animals have evolved. So you can see the lot of changes in the embryological development. Embryological embryological development. So study of the embryos will give us an idea that how the present day animals have evolved from the ancestors. So when we come across we find that uh, most of the developmental stages like morula, blastula and gastrula all indicate what common ancestors. Even the present day animals have all these developmental stages like as I said zygote develops into morula that is a 32 cell stage then blastula, blastula into gastrula. Gastro, right, gastrula into neurula. All these are the developmental stages. So what is embryological evidence? Study of developmental history of an organism is called embryology. Early embryos of several vertebrates pass through common developmental stages such as morula, blastula and gastrula indicating common ancestry. As I said, evidences from the form the very discrete, uh, uh, very important uh, for uh, to prove the process of evolution. So many are direct and indirect evidences are given or, uh, to explain the process of evolution. So one such evidence is the embryological evidence. Moving on to the next very important concept called industrial melanism or it is otherwise called natural cell. This is also one evidence to prove the process of evolution. So explain natural selection in peppered moth. It is asked. So in, usually in exam it is asked explain natural selection in peppered moth. So industrial melanism in peppered moth called Biston vitelloria. I uh, hope you might have come across in England in the 19th century there were two types of uh, moth, one called white winged moth called Biston vitellaria and the other one called melanic form called Biston carbonaria. So here you can see the two, this is called the peppered moth, white colored and it is called peppered moth because there are black spots, black spots. And this is the one which is called melanic forum. This is called melanic form. So in England, in 19th century, in England in 19th century, there were two types of moth. One is called Biston vitellaria. The other one is called Biston Carbonaria. That is, one was the white peppered moth, and the other one was the black, or what we otherwise call it as melanic form. So, this is the melanic form, distant carbonin, and this is the white form. White form. This is the melanic form. This is the peppered moth and this is the melanic moth. So now let us study. This is a very very important concept from examination point of view. So what happened is, it is just like a small story. 
uh, in uh, England in 19th century, there were two types of moth. One is called Biston Bitillaria, which is white colored and with peppered. And it is called white colored peppered moth because it had black spots. The other one variety was the melanic form called the Biston Carbonaria. Here you can see this is the one variety and this is the second variety. So, in the 19th century, this variety was around 99% and this was around 1%. That is, before the industries, uh, before the industrial revolution, so in 19th century, around 99% were the white forms, white peppered forms and 1% was the melanic forms. As such, this white peppered moth, uh, we're, uh, uh, we're taking the uh, help of the support of the tree trunk, uh, which was uh, filled with uh, lichens. So here, the lichens, you know, the, it is the almost white color and this provided a background for the white peppered moth to protect itself from the predators. So when the white uh, melani white colored peppered moth were uh, sitting on the tree trunks having lichens could not be identified by the predator birds because of camouflaging as you know the background of the tree trunk as well as the wings of the uh, white colored peppered moth was almost matching so the predator birds could not identify uh, this uh, white colored peppered moth but right so if, uh, in that 19th century 99% were of western beetle area but as the days passed by and due to industrial revolution more and more industries started coming up in England and what happened is so due to the uh, soot black smoke that comes out from the industries the white peppered moth started becoming what the, the you know there was one more uh, but they get they got transformed into the melanic forms black forms and why this was like you know uh, as you know natural nature itself will select the best to survive and the weak will perish so what happened is so there was one more variety called Biston Carbonaria which was a melanic form. So after the on uh, after the industrial revolution as industry started coming up, so it was vice versa. That is the melanic forms, melanic forms were ninety nine percent and the white peppered were one percent. So before in nineteenth century it was about in nineteenth century it was that is we find that the white peppered moth were 99% and the melanic forms was 1%. But after the industrial revolution, the melanic forms got transformed into 99%. Though they were more dominant than the white peppered moth. And as such, as you know, the black suit started uh, depositing on the tree trunks and the black colored, uh, the melanic forms could not be identified by the predators as it was camouflaging the background. But whereas the melanic forms could be easy, that is the white peppered moths could be easily identified by the background because the background was dark and these were white peppered moths. So they were easily eaten by the predator birds. So which became more dominant? The melanic forms were more dem dominant after the uh, industrial revolution, revolution and the white peppered moth started uh, decreasing uh, almost to 1%. So this is a very good example for what? For natural selection. Nature selects the best to survive and the weak will perish. So let us once again uh, go through this industrial melanism or which is a classical example for natural selection. This moth occurs as I said occurs in two varieties. One is called the white winged moth and a dark winged moth. These moths were seen on tree trunks throughout the England. As I said the tree trunks were covered with lichens to disappear uh, and the background of the white wing moth survived. Why? Because as you know it was acting as a camouflage, it could camouflage with the background of the tree trunk which was covered with light so it could not be easily identified by the predator birds. But the dark winged moths were picked up by the predators. So why? Because if the white color and the black ones was easily identified. So what happened is the white colored peppered moth were around 99% and the melanic forms were 1%. So the melanic so, uh, survived but the dark winged were easily picked up by the predators. During industrial melanism, 
the, during industrial revolution pollution made the lichens to disappear so as the industry started coming up so what about and i think all of you know wherever there is pollution you don't find the lichens so lichens are also used as a pollution indicators lichens can be found only on the tree trunks where it is totally free of pollution and as the industry started coming up and due to industrial revolution more and more industries were coming up and the black smoke started depositing on the tree trunks and the lichens disappeared and the whole of the tree trunk was black in color and uh, due to and become dark due to so the background of the tree became dark due to the deposition of smoke and soot released from the industries because of the dark background of the tree trunks the dark wing moths survived and the white wing moths were picked up by the predator so the population of dark dark wing moth increased compared to the white wing moth so here what happened before the uh, before the industrial revolution these were more dominant 99% and this were 1% because they could be easily identified by the predator birds but this could not be easily identified by the predator birds as it was the background of the tree trunk act as a uh, they camouflage with the tree background of the tree but after the industrial revolution this became 1% and this became 99% see what a revolutionary change you have come across uh, in this uh, moth so similarly excess use of herbicides pesticides are resulted in the selection of resistant varieties so evolution is a random process based on chance events in nature and chance mutation in the organism so thomas malthus worked on population influence the uh, darwin to explain uh, the concept of natural selection so this is a very very good example for you all uh, to explain the natural selection or uh, and as i said this is also very important from examination point of view moving on to the next very important uh, concept called adaptive radiation this is very important from examination point of view definitely they'll ask about what is adaptive radiation what is adaptive radiation give an example so this is very important from examination point of view so what is adaptive radiation how do we define the word called adaptive radiation the process of evolution of different species in a given geographical area starting from a point and radiating to other areas is called adaptive radiation i repeat what is adaptive radiation the process of evolution of different species in a given geographical area starting from a point and radiating to other areas is called adaptive radiation so you can understand the process of adaptive radiation with very good example that is about darwin's finches as you know darwin is rightly called as father of evolution and when darwin visited many islands as he was traveling through a ship called hms beagle he came across one island called galapagos island and where he was observed where he was able to observe a very unique bird called finches which were named as darwin's finches and observed an amazing diversity of creation and he observed a black bird called finches that is the they laid, as it was called darwin's finches 
and finches were diverse in their food habits and they had altered beaks from uh, like from seed picking to vegetarian so like that they had different types of beaks modified so with different types of beaks different types of beak and this is because what to adjust to the changes that is happening in the environment that is what the process of evolution of different species in a given geographical area starting from a point and radiating to other area so that it can survive almost in all habitats by having this altered beaks so darwin finches is a very good example for adaptive breeding you can see in this beautiful picture what are the examples for uh, adaptive radiation moving on to australian marsupials and they have evolved from an ancestral stock so you can take the example for australian marsupials that is tasmanian wolf here you can see the tasmanian wolf and wolf tiger then here you can take sugar glider also sugar glider then you can see the marsupial rat kangaroo that is marsupial rat and kangaroo you can see the marsupial all these are the examples for Aust these are all these are the examples for australian marsupials then for placental mammals as we know in australia uh, uh, due to adaptive radiation uh, varieties of placental mammals have evolved like what we call it as placental wolf then tasmanian wolf here you can see the tasmanian wolf here the tasmanian wolf then you can see the marsupials so all these are the examples for adaptive radiation so i repeat what is adaptive radiation the process of evolution of different species in a given geographical area starting from a point and radiating to other areas is called adaptive radiation so the best example for adaptive radiation is what darwin's finches and the other one is what australian marsupials so the other example is placental mammal so all these examples are also very important from examination point of view definitely you have to explain the concept of adaptive radiation with suitable examples hope you have understood uh, the very important uh, uh, concepts of this very important chapter called evolution so coming back in the next session what i am going to deal in the coming session mechanism of evolution we are going to study about the mechanism of evolution and also very important process called what is saltation and some more other very interesting concepts as i said this chapter itself is quite interesting how the evolution has taken place what are the evidences what are the changes and as i said uh, particularly in this session we came across a very important concept about uh, homologous organs divergent evolution analogous organs convergent evolution with examples and also adaptive radiation and also we studied about a very important concept called industrial melanism which is a very good example for natural selection all the concepts what i have explained in today's session is very important from examination point of view hope you have understood all the concepts what i have explained so i'll be back in the coming session with some more concepts of this very interesting chapter called evolution till then goodbye and thank you